Hey guys, welcome to episode 38, and I am so excited. We have Paige here from The Green Cat, and Green Cat is absolutely one of my favorite restaurants. I absolutely love it. They have the best smoothies, they have the best desserts, they have the best food, and the nice part is if you're vegan, everything's vegan, yeah. right? So, That's and it, it just tastes great. So, we're gonna get right into our questions. We have a lot of vegan questions, so we're gonna ask you. So this question is from Jennifer and Charlotte. She says, I love the podcast and I'm excited that you're doing an episode on veganism because I've been studying it a lot. What are some of the changes you've noticed physically and mentally since becoming vegan? So I'm not vegan, but I do, you know, I don't eat dairy. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to basically, I don't try not to eat gluten. I try not to eat grains. Um, and I don't eat, uh, any kind of dairy at all. Um, so I do, I eat a lot of shrimp and yeah. stuff like that, but for you, you are a hundred percent vegan, right? I am. And you know, I go with the motto that different things work for different yes. people and you can still eat vegan and eat a lot of junk. So it's important to make good decisions in that process. So I try to stick to hearty plant-based foods. Um, and since doing that, I feel 100 times better. So when did you become vegan? I've been vegan now for almost five years. Okay. Um, to be honest, though, throughout my life, I haven't eaten a ton of meat. Um, I grew up eating, like, chicken and mm-hmm. meat. I don't eat a ton of meat either. I just, for whatever reason, I just don't want it. I don't like a ton of meat. Yeah, and so it, there was something about it. It kind of just didn't sit well with me. Um, and since I've done it, I feel a lot less sluggish. I have a lot more energy. And honestly, I make better decisions because of it, just being aware of what I'm putting into my body. So basically, the main thing is just tons more energy since you've been vegan. Yes, I will warn you though, even after not eating a lot of meat and switching to a vegan diet, I did go through a detox period. So don't let that discourage you if you're new to it. Um, but it does get better. Okay. Alexis in New York says, I've been combining my intermittent fasting with the vegan lifestyle for about a month now, and I'm starting to get stuck in a recipe rut. What are some of your favorite meals? So I switch it up a lot and I have a hard time, like I can't follow recipes, so I throw things in. So one of my favorite things to make at home is veggie burgers because you can use a lot of seasonal produce. So you can go to a lot of farmers down here, farmers markets. If any of you get CSA programs, this is like well, the Well, I'm glad you thing. brought that up because it's funny because I had looked at this veggie burger yeah. um, and I don't I don't even remember where I was maybe Kroger or something and I looked at the back of it and I was looking at the ingredients and I was thinking to myself oh my gosh this has so many chemicals in it yeah. I wouldn't dare put this in my body so when you're talking about making a veggie burger you're talking about like literally hand making oh maybe we can have you on yes. back on and <laughs> we can show people you know that'd be so fun right we could show people how to make a non-chemical based veggie burger that'd and be fun it's so simple and like the beauty of it is is you can just start with a base of garlic and onion and you can throw in whatever vegetables you want um so you just, would you put that in like the uh blender yeah maybe what we could do and just so you guys know right before this we made this amazing raw avocado cheesecake Key lime, <laughs> key lime cheesecake, right? Yes. I mean, it is to die for. So in the show notes, we're going to have the recipe there. And you've got to go on YouTube. Go to Chantel Rayway, and you'll see this recipe there. And it's unbelievably good. You also have this, they have this cake. I wonder, can you ship this? Because we have a lot of listeners. Is there a way? We've got to figure out a way you could ship those I haven't cakes. figured out a way yet, but maybe in the future. Maybe with dry ice. You'd yeah. have to do it. Because, you know, I get some of these deliveries. Like, I got this daily harvest. Mm-hmm. And because we have so many people, if you'll notice, all these questions, and maybe one or two are from Virginia Beach. The yeah. rest are from, from everywhere else. So, believe it or not, more of our listeners are actually not even in the Virginia area. They're from all over uh, the country, which is which is really fun. But we have to figure out a way that you can ship these. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff that you probably could ship with yes. the dry ice mm-hmm. that we can. So what is your website for people to find out? So our website is www.thegreencatva.com. And so. we'll put that in the show notes. All right, so talk more about this veggie burger. We'll have you back on <laughs> to show us how to make this veggie burger. But in my opinion, I wouldn't dare eat some of these veggie burgers that are like frozen in the market because of the chemicals in there. Tell us like... A, 
just a base recipe of what so you usually do. So the one I made last time, and I was loving it. My, I have a four-year-old. He was like, Mom, this is so good. Mm, like, he okay. was eating it up. Um, so I did a base of onion, garlic, and sweet potato. And then I added a little bit of nutritional yeast, sun-dried tomato, and some fresh basil to give it, like, mm. a nice herby flavor. Sounds um, delicious. Yeah, and I started with that base, and I just sauteed everything down. And then I stick it in the blender so you can use oats to thicken it. You can use chia seeds. Um, there's a few different ways you could go. And I put that in the blender and I get like nice of it. It's, this requires getting dirty again, yes. of course, my hands. Um, but basically I blend half of it and then I put it back in the bowl. And at that point you want to let it cool down because it's still somewhat hot and you just form it into balls and bake it. It's really good. So can you, is it the consistency, can you put it on the grill? Because I love yeah. like a grilled burger. That's mm -hmm. what we'll do. Yeah. Um, so what are some of these thickening things that you can use? So you just mentioned a few. Yeah. You've got chia seeds that'll do it. You've got... Um, oats are really oats. good. And if you want to try to be paleo and you're trying to be grain free, what are some Flax other seeds. things? Flax, Flax seeds. seeds are a great thickener. Okay. Um, but really, you could just... A quinoa is a great one. Mm -hmm. um, rice... Uh, I don't want to keep naming off, but you can go a million different yes. ways. I just kind of throw things in. So. Yeah. We'll have to, let's experiment yeah. next time. We'll have you on the show and we'll make some amazing vegan burgers. That sounds exciting. Um, so any other recipe, like give some more things. Like what are your favorite go-tos? Like if you're making dinner for your family or... So I am obsessed with cashews. You would not believe the amount of things you can do with cashews. Mm. So I make a ton of dressings and sauces at mm. home. And this is great if you're going dairy free. So at the Green Cat, we have this pesto dressing. And most pesto is made with um, cheese or, you know, any type of dairy. This pesto we make, we actually get neighborhood harvest it. herbs delicious. in. delicious. You mentioned their program. So they have like the freshest herbs. So we use the basil and the cilantro from neighborhood harvest, um, some cashews, fresh garlic, tons of fresh lemon juice, and a little bit of olive oil. But the oil is optional. And we blend that together. And like that is so great on like pizzas or toast. I saw you did a cauliflower crust. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing on top of that. Awesome. All right, so this is from Krista in Virginia Beach. She says, one of my favorite things about eating vegan is the money I save at the grocery store, which that is very surprising on a side note. But anyway, she says, I'm still cheap when it comes to organic produce. Does organic make a big difference, and should I spend the extra money? I personally think yes. I am a big fan of what I put into my body mm. is a big deal. And so I do spend the extra money into buying produce. But with that, you can be, you know, there's different ways to do it. Like I might skip a few cents and like not buy organic bananas or am, uh, organic avocados. Like there's a dirty dozen. Yes. And if you wanted to save some money, you could go through it this way. I feel the same way because if it has a thick covering over top of it like a banana, even if there's tons of chemicals on the outside of that that peel, mm -hmm. you're not eat. It's not like you're eating the banana peel. So exactly. I'm not gonna. If I can have a banana that's organic, great. If I can, I'm not gonna go crazy. I'm exactly with you. There are a few things though I will not budge on, like organic berries. I find that very important. Mm -hmm. They're just heavily pesticides, like heavily used with pesticides. Yes. Um, apples, cucumbers at the store. I don't want cucumbers with wax all over them. So I mean, use your judgment. Though, but those are things I find important to buy organic. Awesome. All right. Ashley in Springfield says, I'm sure you get this question all the time, but I grew up learning that I need meat for protein. Where do you get your protein? So I think this is a huge misconception. So there is a ton of plant protein. So you can get it from your normal things such as beans, quinoa, but a lot of greens actually have protein in them. So I really try not to stress about my protein because I'm eating these things that are good for me and I'm getting what I need and I feel great. Another thing that I am obsessed with is like the lentil and the bean pastas. Um, that way, if you're trying to cut out oats and things like that, mm -hmm. like Trader Joe's has like this really good red lentil pasta and the only ingredient is red lentils. So that's a great way to get in some protein. protein. Yeah. Great. Okay, Eric in Pennsylvania says, I'm always curious to ask people that I meet, what caused you to become vegan? For me, it just felt right. I, you know, it kind of, I don't want to like, I do not judge other people for their decisions. But for me, I didn't feel good like after I ate it. Um, so I personally decided to cut it out. And one of the last things I cut out and it was hard for me was dairy. 
Um, and I feel so much better after cutting that all out. Mm -hmm. But besides that, there are a lot of environmental reasons to go vegan. Um, and there's a lot of health reasons. I find that we have a lot of older men coming into the green cat with heart problems later on mm -hmm. and eating a plant-based diet is good for your heart health. Good. All right. This question is from Catherine in North Carolina. She says, I've done a lot of reading about vegan online and it seems like the health benefits are huge. The one thing I'm worried about is that it seems like the diet involves a lot of carbs and carbs are one of the things that make me blow up. Have you noticed a change in your weight since becoming a vegan? This is a good question, Catherine. It is a great question. If anything, I feel like I have lost more weight because I make better eating decisions. Well, and I think this is a really big point because I know a lot of people who are vegan who literally they'll they'll make vegan bread and they've got this vegan butter and mm -hmm. they're you know they're just eating so many carbs and you are going to blow up that way whether it's vegan or if it's not yes you're eating vegan waffles you're eating vegan bagels you're eating vegan bread yeah. and you're just loading up on this stuff you're going to blow up Absolutely. that's a great point just because it is a vegan pancake does not make it a healthy <laughs> pancake um so but if you do want to eat those things there's also healthy ways to do it so if you're going to eat bread i always try to go with a sprouted bread I'm a big fan of Trader Joe's, obviously, but they have this sprouted wheat germ bread. It's really, really good. Um, and then, like I said, for pasta, if you're having a hard time cutting that out, there's a lot of great like protein-packed pastas with quinoa, with lentils, with chickpeas. Um, luckily, there's a lot of cool stuff out on the market. Yeah. And I will tell you, the one thing is, is that, you know, I know a lot of people who, you know, I just saw someone the other day that said um, that they're going – they went gluten-free and within 24 hours that they made that decision, all of their issues, you know, they had all these issues. They'd gone mm -hmm. from doctor to doctor and all their issues went away. <clears throat> and for me, um, you know, when I cut out gluten and grains, mm -hmm. like for whatever reason, you know, I believe, you know, in my book I talk about that you should eat 80% clean, 20% whatever you want. The problem is, is that unfortunately some people like me have autoimmune issues. Mm -hmm. We have gut issues. We have things that for whatever reason, when I eat gluten or when I eat grains, my body, my thyroid can't function. All yeah. kinds of negative things happen. So you have to know your own body. And I think that like, for example, quinoa, which I think is like one of the best foods for you, right? Mm -hmm. I love quinoa. I think it's amazing. It's got so much protein. Unfortunately, when I eat it, I don't feel good. Yeah. Um, it make, My thyroid doesn't work as well. I used to make all kinds of quinoa recipes. I have some quinoa recipes in my book, but when I eat it, I don't feel great. So you have to kind of listen to your body and figure out what works for you. But really, for the most part, with fruits and vegetables, most people you know, with fruits and vegetables can do, you know, pretty well. I think that's a great point. Like, it's all about listening to your body and what feels right for you. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I'm so excited that my new book, Waste Away, The Chantel Rayway, is now available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and pretty much anywhere you can find books. But we also have the audiobook, the ebook, and my new recipe book that you can download all the recipes that I love that I make, and it's super cheap. It's all my favorites. Anyway, if you have a minute to write a review on Amazon, I would be ever grateful. All right, Carrie in Virginia Beach. I'm single and very social. I don't like to stay home. I'm worried that eating vegan would affect my social life. Where are your favorite places to go out to eat? Well, that's, <laughs> hello, she's the owner of Green Cat. She's going to be like, um, only go to Green Cat. Don't go anywhere else. <laughs> no, I mean, I am all about some Green Cat, but I'm also a huge foodie, and I love to support some other local businesses, okay, and we so have some great ones like? here. Besides the Green Cat, uh -huh. Bilotti's is amazing. Mm -hmm. Masala Bites, I recently found out about them. Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. um, and what do you get there? So, like, when you go, what do you get? Masala Bites has a ton of curry. Um, so, it is. they are some spicier dishes, but they have these cauliflower, like, bites things. And 
I didn't have it with them. Wow, <laughs> um, okay. But Bilates has a lot of great options. They have like a, a veggie patty, like I mentioned before, or their falafels are great, tons of salads, and they make everything from scratch as well. I will tell you one restaurant I, I love is a place called Commune. Have yeah. you eaten there? Mm-hmm. And uh, I know the owner, great guy. And they have this, I think it's called like a harvest salad or something like that, but it has like all these sweet potatoes and root vegetables. Oh, wow. And I think it does have eggs on it, but you could ask for it, you yeah. know, with no eggs and some substitutions. But it is absolutely to, to die for. And it's the great so thing good. about them is they have so, like, it's all local. All local. Yeah. yeah, that's so important. What else? Where? What other restaurants do you like to go to? Um, I'm a big fan of Bay Local as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I find myself... What do you get there? Like At Bay Local, there? I get the avocado toast a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, or they have, like... The thing about them is they don't have a ton of vegan options, but it's important to learn how to substitute things. And trust me, I don't go out to eat and I'm not like one of those people who are a pain in the butt, but it's okay to be like, hey, I can do that without cheese. Or like, hey, I don't want that. Like, I mean, I do. And I don't think I'm a pain in the butt. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but I find myself... So do you out- cheat ever? Is there ever a time where you just say... Like you're at a party, there's you're starving, there's absolutely not one vegan choice, and you just go, forget it. Like today I'm just making an exception or you know, no. I don't really cheat, but I also am not I'm not gonna go out to eat and be like, Oh my god, is there egg in this bread? I'm just gonna eat the bread. Gotcha. Like I don't go out and be like, Hey, did you slab this in butter? Like I use my judgment, but mm-hmm. I also don't want to be like overly particular because I'm not gonna stress myself that much out uh-huh. about like about what I eat. So Gotcha. Yeah. Got it. All right. Jess in Tampa says, I'm always looking for new things to try and add to my cart. I have been eating mostly vegan for three months and have done tons of Pinterest research looking for new things to make. What are the top 10 staples on your grocery list and what is your favorite place to shop? Do you have any favorite products? You know, that's a great idea. You really should create a Pinterest page Mm -hmm. where you have like some of these recipes and we can post it. That'd be a fantastic idea. But what are, like when you go to the grocery store, like these are my 10 things that I always get. So my thing about the grocery store is that 80% of my like cart is fruits and vegetables. So I try to stick to the outside of the store because that's where all the produce is and things Mm -hmm. like that. The things I go inside of the store for are like Costco is great for buying like bulk chia seeds or like bulk more like grains and uh, beans and things like that. So like those are some staples in my diet and I choose those. Um, But otherwise I try to stick to fruits and vegetables. Um, Do you eat a lot of fruit? Or do you do you kind of limit? I do it a not eat bit? a ton of fruit, but I did mention that I have a four year old, and like, I I'm very particular. Like, I make his lunch every day. I don't restrict him in any way, but I like to give him a good variety of things. I know some people are weird about fruit, and I think it's about listening to your body. There are a ton of nutrients in it, so it's just about working in what's for you. Got it. In my opinion. <laughs> All right. This next one is Sarah in Roxboro. Some of these places, I don't even know where that is. Like, I have no... Do you know where Roxboro is? I cannot is? tell you at all. Hold on. Now, let me make sure. Okay, here it is. I have done a lot of reading about eating vegan online, and it seems like the health benefits are huge. The one thing I'm getting my... It's, I'm trying to get my husband on board. How do you do that? So, so I, are you dating anyone right now? No, I'm not. Okay, and everyone, <laughs> she's single and ready to mingle. Oh <laughs> um, so the thing about, like, I actually pride myself in this, and I think I've done, a, I have a four-year-old, which I've raised, and um, I think it's important not to push anybody into any type of a diet. I think offering them things and letting them choose their own way is important. So for me, I wouldn't force that on my partner. I would just be like, hey, this is what I'm eating. Like, do you want to try some of this too? And just make it really good so they like it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's important to give people a variety. So Mm -hmm. like... It's hard when, you know, a lot of times like if... If you're you're vegan and now you're trying to make dinner and now you've got to make two dinners, right? Because at some point, like like my husband, he's a meat and yeah. potato guy. If I he he what he's it's funny because he loves the green cat. Awesome. You know what he loves? You guys have that the, the chicken truck. salad or yes. a fake chicken salad or whatever. He loves that. He loves the the different toasts that you have, the avocado mm-hmm. toast. He loves all that. Um, and he can eat there for breakfast and lunch and just be super happy. For dinner, 
I think he'd be okay with it for a few nights. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many nights I'd go before he'd say, please bring me a steak. <laughs> My suggestion for that is like, I would stick to more simple things and be like, hey, let's do a taco night. And basically everything else is the same. And then you just have to make a little meat for the oh, tacos. Oh, that's a or great like, idea. You know, adding things like that. Or like, here, let's do this dish and add it in later on. Right. Because most of the dishes I'm making or I eat at home, it's like, you could eat them with meat, you could eat them without, without. meat. So it's just that's like, a great idea. I love that. All right, last question. Rose in Norfolk says, I have switched my diet to over 95% vegan. I'm so proud of myself and I feel so good. I'm considering my cosmetics and body products now. Do you use vegan products? And if so, what do you recommend? Have you noticed a difference? Yeah, I think this is a great topic and something that a lot of people overlook. What you mm. put on your skin, it makes a big deal. So at The Green Cat, we happen to sell like organic body butters that my mom makes from scratch. And so like I love to use those as a lotion. Wow. Um, she makes scrubs as well. So that kind of covers, covers it for like the body products. Mm -hmm. But for makeups and things like that. You know, that, that'd yeah. be great if you came on the show and we could actually show how to make some yeah. of those things. Because the truth is, is like a lot of people are like, that's great. I'm not going to take the time and the energy to make that, but I will, I'll buy it, right? Yeah. You know, I've even just whipped up together some scrubs at home, though, and it's like, hey, here's some coffee I made this morning. Here's some extra grinds. Let me add a little oil and essential oils, and I'll use it as a face scrub. But what about the makeup? Do you guys sell a makeup We line? do not sell makeup, but Whole Foods has a ton of vegan mm -hmm. makeup with cleaner ingredients, or you could also go to places like Amazon. Yeah, great idea. Any other vegan products that you use other than... Um, you know, makeup, anything else that you can think of. What about like shampoo and stuff like that? Um, I try to be conscious. So like with deodorant and things like that, I go down more of a natural route with um, like my teeth. I've cut out using fluoride and I stick to like, like my mom, she got me hooked on it. It's like this uh, toothpaste with just like baking soda and a couple of other ingredients. And you wouldn't believe how like amazing it is. Yeah, I think the two things that I think people really need to be aware of, because in my book I talk about uh, a chapter, and it's all called Chemical City. Mm -hmm. And it just talks about so many of the chemicals that we're putting in. People don't realize your skin is your largest yes. organ, right? And so on your largest organ, people are worried about what they're putting in, but then they'll be putting on all these toxins into your armpits. And... Um, I just think it's terrible. And really with the fluoride, it's so cute. Even my son now, we were somewhere and I forgot his toothpaste. He's like, Mom, what are we going to do? This this toothpaste has fluoride in it. <laughs> you know, we're used to doing the fluoride free because I've even gotten him going. Yeah. What kind of chemicals in, is in this? And why are we putting this into our, between the mouthwash, between uh, the toothpaste, between the deodorant? It's so, so important. I'm now even, I used to be, not as concerned about the shampoo, but even like the sulfite free shampoos mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, well, thank you so much for yeah, coming on. For this was me. so much fun. <laughs> I do want to tell you guys, do not pass go, do not collect $200. You have to see uh, this recipe that we made online. And I mm -hmm. hope we'll, you'll, we'll have you back and we'll do yeah, some more of these definitely. recipes because they're so much fun to watch and they taste amazing. And we're so glad you joined us. Again, if you want to see our YouTube channel, just Google Chantel Ray Way and you can check out that. And if you want more information, tell everyone your website one yeah, more time. Yeah, so we are on Facebook, Instagram, and we have a website. It's all under the Green Cat VA. All right, awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.